I'm reading some of the stuff Fran Drescher um, has been saying, and it, 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 doesn't, it just doesn't make me very optimistic. I, I guess she told the Associated Press that this moment is about the entire world of work uh, and a larger stand against corporate leaders uh, and those who value shareholders uh, over the people uh, who create their product. I mean, I've seen enough Academy Awards. I, I know how most of the industry thinks about capitalism and, and people that actually produce real things other than movies. It seems dangerous to me that, it, I mean, she can play a role, but if you were going to play the role of a union hero going against all of corporate America, you could sort of get out of hand there in terms of delusions of grandeur. How do you ever, do you think, how do they settle? I mean, will they, well, will, they ever, will they ever come and talk to each other about the real world instead of, you know, you know playing Aaron Brockovich or something? Well, Fran Drescher is playing a role there, and she's trying to get her, her gill, which is SAG-AFTRA, not the Writers Guild. Right. She's trying to get the actors in solidarity behind the cause, and she's been very effective within her own guild at getting them galvanized. Now, whether she's been effective in the overall negotiations, it's less clear, and they have sort of backburnered her lately. We haven't seen as much of her as we did in the early days of the actor strike. And keep in mind, the studios aren't even talking to the actors right now. They've chosen to go with the writers first here, mostly because the writers have been on strike the longest, but I think in part because the rhetoric coming out of the actors was so vitriolic and trying to bring the entire world of labor into this fight. And, you know, there is a movement going on right now in organized labor that we haven't seen in many years. And it's happening in Hollywood, but it's also happening in many other places around the world. So to minimize that, I think, is a mistake. But you're right in the sense that the, the rhetoric from the, the actors have caused the studios to move to the writers. And we'll see how long they stay with the writers. There's a real chance they could go back to the actors and leave the writers hanging for a little while, given that the talks are not going in, a, in a, the right direction. Right. Well, organized labor as a friend in the Biden administration, at least uh, that, that's the rhetoric you hear from the Biden administration. But Matt, we're still, what are we, 7% down from 40 or 50% in terms of union members? So we, we, we do see yellow or UPS we, in, in the American. We've seen some things like that, but I don't know if I'd say that the entire tide is shifting back to, to organized labor. We, you know, we've got labor laws. We've got a lot of things that cover the reason unions were so important and so effective 100 years ago. Some of those reasons aren't really around today, are they? Well, I think that depends who you talk to. I mean, the writers see this as an existential fight. That if they don't stand up for the, the AI, change business AI. model in entertainment, yeah. that they're going to be left is. behind. And if you look, if you look around Los Angeles in particular this summer, there have been strikes after strikes after strikes. Hotel workers, teachers. It isn't just confined to certain areas. So it depends on how you're looking at this. And you know, the only real gains that the talent community has made in Hollywood over the history of the business have been by strikes. The entire residual system and the fact that actors and writers and directors get paid when their work is reused, that happened because of a strike in 1960 that looks a lot like the strike that's happening today. Well, we just don't want, you know, we're finally coming back the whole industry from from pandemic and now this. Uh, it, it, you don't... it certainly doesn't help. And you don't want to cut off your nose to spite your face. Yesterday was $4 day. Did you know that, Matt? $4. I did. Yeah, we're going to see the numbers today on how it did. Uh, I, I wonder if it boosted revenue. We've got uh, Barbie and Oppenheimer are now at $2 billion combined. A pretty awesome. uh, big well, success story there. Yeah, that's good. It was going well. Till, uh, now we'll see when there's nothing in the can. For, for this could go on for who knows. And then there could be nothing coming to theaters. Well, as we go into the fall... The summer of 2024 is really threatened okay. for movies. Right. A lot of movies that were either not finished or still have post-production and other things to do. If they don't get All those right. movies finished very soon, there's not going to be a lot of big summer blockbusters next year.